So older dogs and even cats can get memory loss and they have behaviors like going into a corner and staring into space. So guess what? They have amyloid plaques in the brain. Amyloid plaques, the same amyloid plaques that you see in humans. back to the Dr. Snow Brain Health Show, where we talk about brain health. And today we're going to delve into talking about brain health of those loved ones in our family, those furry critters, our pets. So I'm really excited to talk about this, especially since this is a topic that I don't think a lot of people go into or that we think a lot about the health of our pets, but often not about the brain health of our pets and how to improve it. So I am Scott Olford, and we're going to be talking about that today and I'm joined by Dr. Snow. So Dr. Snow, I'd love to start with talking about what are the primary causes of memory loss in humans and focusing on what we talked about a little bit, plaques, tangles, and inflammation. So what do we see in the brains of humans who have memory loss? Well, you said it right on, PTI, plaques, tangles, and inflammation. And we talked about it in a number of different videos. Plaques are like these Swedish meatballs in the brain. They start in your 20s. They consist of a protein called the beta amyloid protein. And the beta amyloid protein, which is very small, it's a peptide of 42 amino acids, starts sticking together, basically forms like a big ball, like a snowball. And it's in between neurons in the brain, and it contributes to memory loss. Neurofibrillary tangles is like dried up spaghetti. It's inside neurons. It consists of a protein called tau protein. Basically, it gets forming paired helical filaments. It kills the neuron. And so that's also causing memory loss. And the third thing is inflammation. Inflammation in the brain. Uh, microglia and astrocytes go around the amyloid plaques and they're putting out inflammatory cytokines that are elevated. You could measure it in the blood or cerebral spinal fluid of the human and actually pick up elevated levels of interleukin-1 and TNF-alpha and some other ones as well. And so if you have all three of those, you, and that's what occurs in humans. So we talk about memory loss in humans. Have you observed symptoms of memory loss in aging animals? And how is it similar to humans? How is it different from humans? So I know a lot about dogs because I actually had a chow chow named Einstein. And he lived to 15 years old. And when he was about 10, he would start walking into a corner and just stare. You know, and I go, Einstein, come here, buddy. And he would just stare in the corner and I was going, what's going on? And I found out after taking him to the vet that he had so older dogs and even cats can get memory loss and they have behaviors like going into a corner and staring into space. So the dogs actually have something that they can get over the age of seven years and it's called canine cognitive dysfunction. And cats will get feline cognitive dysfunction, probably over 10 years old. And guess what? They have amyloid plaques in the brain. Amyloid plaques, the same amyloid plaques that you see in humans are in the brains of dogs and cats. And also it consists of the same beta amyloid protein that you see in humans. So there's definitely a connection between memory loss in humans and certain animals as well. And I could talk about different animal types, but dogs and cats, I'm sure people are very interested in if they see some behavioral problems in aging dogs or cats, they should go to their vet and see what we could do for them. 
Yeah, so you talked about the parallels of what's happening in the brains of humans as well as people's pets. And you all mentioned your chow chow that he would stare off into space. Are there similarities of symptoms that you see in terms of memory loss between humans and pets as well? Like what are what are red flags that people should be looking for in their pets to take to say, I need to take them to the vet and get this checked out? So for for dogs, and I'm looking at my notes, disorientation, altered sleep pattern in humans and changes in behavior. You know, are they coming? Is the dog or cat coming to you as you call them? You know, are they happy? Do they, you know, do they sleep a long time? What are the changes in their behavior? Is there confusion? Is there altered grooming habits? And are there changes in the interaction with their environment? A lot of these things actually are very similar between animals, pets, dogs, and cats, and humans. So you're seeing a lot of the disorientation, not knowing where they are, and you know you can tell you can tell in your pet if something's off. Yeah. So in your research, what changes do you notice in the, in the brains of aging dogs and cats, and of humans? Do you start do you start to see more like plaques or tangles or inflammation among dogs and cats like is it because there's similar patterns but how are they different and there was one or two groups that were looking at animals the whole time so it's it's very interesting i didn't do a lot of research on animals but i read a lot of the papers that these people have been putting out for like 30 to 40 years so the latest thing is that it's really interesting that dogs and cats have plaques in the brain very similar to humans, but they don't have a lot of neurofibrillary tangles. Nobody knows why. Why do the dogs... And they, their plaques are big. These are big boulders in the brain, whereas I would say the humans have smaller little pebbles in the brain, and dogs have big plaques. I'll show pictures of this because I, I have some amazing... Uh, slides from various papers that came out. So they don't have tangles, but they're suspected to have neural inflammation as well. There hasn't been a lot of research on the neural inflammation part, and I think this is going to happen in the next few years, where they're going to take the blood or cerebral spinal fluid and see what is the elevated inflammatory cytokines that are coming out of the brain, basically. Is it interleukin-1? Is it TNF alpha, interleukin 6, interleukin 20. There's a whole bunch of different interleukins. So I think there's got to be more research on this. But the most interesting thing to me is that they have a lot of plaques, but they don't have a lot of tangles. Guess what? The plaques alone are causing memory loss. Plaques and inflammation, that combo is probably causing memory loss in these aging pets. Okay, so they're more like grandma's jumbo-sized meatballs rather than the, yes. the, the Swedish meatballs. Okay. Yeah, jumbos. Yeah, that's that's really helpful. So, a lot of people have cats. A lot of people have dogs. What other pets and what other animals seem to have this same kind of challenge that you think would be notable? Well. I've done some research and went back. So I knew about monkeys and rhesus monkeys getting plaques in the brain as they age, very similar to humans. I even knew about polar bears getting plaques in the brain, believe it or not. But when I reviewed the literature just before this talk and this podcast and I've gone back, now I see that dolphins get plaques in the brain and they found these washed up dolphins out of the sea that landed on the beach and guess and they looked at their brains filled with plaques so the dolphin could have not found his way was disoriented and then ended up on the beach and that's what they're thinking is going on with these dolphins and cattle have plaques in the brain as they age so the amyloid plaques and not necessarily neurofibrillary tangles but plaques are definitely seen in all these different types of animals. And that's quite interesting, quite impressive. Okay, so it's not just land mammals and common house pets. It's cattle, it's it's sea life. It's okay. So there, there are a lot of different animals and pets that struggle with this. 
And you know, and you know what, Scott, this tells you is that the beta amyloid protein is conserved across species, which means the beta amyloid precursor protein, which is a larger 695 to 671 amino acid protein that sits in the cell membrane of neurons, is conserved over species. And then there's two cuts by two enzymes that actually make the beta amyloid protein, the 40 to 42 smaller amino acid protein that rolls up into a snowball to make a plaque. This seems to be conserved across, you know, different species. So it's not just humans who have problems with memory loss. It's actually seen across, you know, many different animals, mm. which is amazing. Yeah. So out of curiosity, what kinds of dietary choices and nutritional decisions would be helpful for pet owners to think about when they are trying to conserve the life of their pet? Like, does nutrition play a significant role in memory loss and preserving memory of pets? Yeah, it's a very good question. And people are trying to deal with it. So omega-3 fatty acids like fish oil has anti-inflammatory properties. Antioxidants like vitamin E and vitamin C would be good for oxidative stress. Now, medium chain triglycerides, actually Purina went after medium chain triglycerides that is a type of fat that's converted into energy in the brain. And they have a product actually called Purina Bright Mind. Guess what, mm. it, it's a dog chow for dogs over the age of seven because they know they have cognitive decline and they found medium chain triglycerides are actually helping to improve the cognition in elder dogs and cats. So they put together, it's already on the market, Purina Bright Mind. But you know, we've been working on Cat's Claw and Oolong Tea and our Percepta products and we're now starting to develop a Percepta pet memory snack that will contain concentrated PTI 00703 cat's claw and the oolong tea extract, which we have patented and exclusive. We think it's going to help reduce the brain plaques in aging dogs and cats. So we're working on this product. I'm, I'm really interested in this. If you were to study dogs and cats, are you doing some kind of scan of their brain are you looking at some of those factors we talked about the before and after in terms of behavior how do you measure how effective it is over a, a certain period of time like what do those tests look like so believe it or not there's canine cognitive study units across the united states there's at least six where you could take aging dogs and they could run memory tests on them. So you could do pet imaging just like in humans now. I could see the plaque load in a live dog with pet imaging. Same sort of thing. You inject them with a radioactive dye. It goes into the brain and lights up red. And then, wow, there's your plaque load. You're not going to see much tangle load, but you'll see plaque load. And then you can add a couple of things. You want to see if the plaques get reduced by pet imaging. You also want to see if they have cognitive problems, whether that improves. So this will be like a three to six to 12 month test in aging dogs and live dogs. And they could see it in live dogs. This is happening in live time. Saying I'd love to see what kind of research groups like Purina have considering what, what they've done, but I'm really interested to follow what kinds of studies are being done because not just the insights and a lot of it is now turning over to what's going on in the brain of these animals as they age what's going on with their cognitive decline their memory and you know a lot of people want their dogs and cats to live longer you know we want dogs now to live to be 15 20 cats to be 20 30 years old and that's what they're trying to do and that's what i would try to do as well so are there any other considerations for people that want to improve the, the brain health of their pets that they should consider or anyone that you know that is really on the front lines talking about these kinds of issues and saying, hey, if you want to improve your, your pet's brain health, 
here's what you should do. Here's who you should follow. There, there's not a lot of gurus out there who are doing this. There's one channel I actually ended up listening to, and his name is Rocky Kanaka on YouTube. And he has this great YouTube channel called Sitting with Dogs. So you know what he does? He goes into these kennels where there are abandoned dogs and he sits with, they're in fear. They lost their owner or who knows what, you know, they were left on the street and these are strays. And this kennel picks them up and he ends up going into their cage and slowly sits down with them, try to get the fear out of the dog. So I've actually reached out to him. He's hard to get a hold of. He's, you know, his uh, YouTube subscriptions went from like a million that I was watching. Now it's up to over 4 million. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you doing this episode. I was very interested in these kinds of conversations, especially after we had talked about the experiments with mice. I was curious what other, what other animals, what other creatures have these kinds of, of challenges and knowing that this is shared among many mammal species and so i yep. appreciate uh you having the conversation today dr snow okay great thanks a lot scott and it just Absolutely. tells you that plaques and are all the brains across you know different animals not just humans yeah and if you're interested in more content please subscribe to the channel we're going to continue to have more of these important conversations in in the months and years ahead